Just started a Minecraft world, want to know what to build next? Well, I have some guides for you on right when you start the world, what to build, and then your next starter farms that you're gonna wanna build as quickly as possible. So here we are inside of Minecraft and I have a few ideas laid out for you right here. But obviously if you are starting a world for the first time and you need to have some builds right off the bat, in the first 10 minutes before it becomes nighttime, there's one thing that I highly, highly, highly suggest that you do. After you make your starter tools and uh, basically get up to stone, spend the next moment exploring and looking for sheep, specifically sheep so that you can kill them and get their wool. Whenever you kill a sheep, there's a potential that it will drop a little bit of wool. So let's go over here and kill some of these guys. And if you can get up to three wool, then you'll be able to make your first bed. And that is really what you're aiming for here because being able to sleep through the first night will make your life a whole lot simpler. You'll be able to set a spawn point at a new base. You'll be able to just completely skip the 10 minutes of nighttime where if you don't have any armor and you don't really have anything, you know, because you're just starting off, you can just sleep through the night instead of needing to deal with all of the mobs. So the first thing to do is to get this white wool. Then you're going to get planks from chopping down trees and all of that sort of stuff then you'll just craft your bed inside of your crafting table it is very simple planks on the bottom wool on the top if you happen to have a different color of wool they do need to all match in order to get that same bed but normally it's pretty simple to find some uh, white sheep and then you'll be able to sleep through your first night like a pro instead of noob towering up to try to avoid all of the bad mobs in the game. After you have slept through your first night, your mission is really just to gather resources and play the game for a little while. Why is that? Because the next builds that you make are going to require a little bit more resources. So you're gonna be focusing on getting food, blocks, or like, like precious metals. So you're gonna be wanting to get iron, diamond to go to the nether because you need a diamond pick in order to make a nether portal. And then once in the nether, finally you are going to want some quartz because some of the things that we're gonna be building, like the observer, that requires quartz in its recipe. So you're gonna to wanna to get at least a little bit of quartz from the nether. Now, once you've done all that, we can start on your basic farms. And by the way, while you're out exploring, I'm assuming you're also gonna kill a few more creatures in order to get food. You're just gonna be using food in the early game that you just got from the world. You're not gonna be using your farm food until you finally make a farm. So first, let's talk about farms. We're gonna be talking about crops in this uh, first little build. And crops are planted in the ground. If you break these types of grass here, you can break fern, grass, all that stuff. Every once in a while, they will drop a little bit of wheat seeds. And we can just keep punching them until they drop them. Can't remember if I need to be in survival or not in order for that. There we go, got a wheat seed, perfect. So if you don't happen to run across a village, there happens to be a village way over there, you can barely see that little house. But if you don't run across a village with uh, any type of carrots or potatoes, you can always get seeds from the grass and then plant that into farmland. You make farmland with a hoe by right clicking the grass. Now you need to make sure that your farmland is watered because if it's not watered, your farm here will be dehydrated. And so you can see these farm pieces and eventually those will turn back into dirt. If you happen to have stuff planted in dry farm, it will still keep the farmland. So it'll stop it from going to dirt, but your crops are going to grow very, very slowly. So you wanna make sure that you have some water. Let's grab a bucket of water here, remove that piece and then place that in there. And then everything will become hydrated again. In order to get the most out of your water, you need to space it out. 
Anytime that you have a source of water, you can go four blocks away from it in every direction, including diagonal. So this right here is actually the smallest farm you could make while using the most efficientness of your water. Does that make sense? So right here, we have the water in the dead center and then four blocks going in every direction. That means that this space is nine by nine because you got four, you got one block for your water here and four on the other side, add that up, that is nine blocks. So over here, we've just doubled that to make sure that we can get the most effective use of our water here. And so basically always try to build in multiples of nine and you'll be able to easily water all of your cropland. But a lot of people, they really don't stick to crops for very long. And if they do, they're mostly making wheat just to feed to animals. Uh, because with wheat, you get seeds for the chickens and wheat will help out the, uh, the cows and the sheep. You'll need to make carrots if you want to help breed your pigs and all that sort of stuff. So normally, this is a very starter step. Most uh, players don't even eat what comes out of their farms. And they make mob farms in order to get meat. And that way, your hunger will stay up for a little bit longer. So this is one of the first of the mob farms that I'm going to show you guys. And this is a chicken farm. And this is by far the simplest chicken farm in my opinion. You have some starter animals back here, and these chickens are going to be laying eggs that go into this hopper, which will go into this dispenser and will create babies. When the babies grow up, eventually they will get hit with this lava bucket that pops in and out really quickly, and then they'll die to the fire damage, and then they will leave their remains inside of this chest in here. I just made it so we don't have any uh, drops from that. But this is a very, very, very efficient way to make one of these farms. What you need is two dispensers, two hoppers, any type of solid block, it can be glass, a slab, and two observers, and a single uh, comparator. And then uh, also your chests here. Uh, your chests can be expanded uh, if you want. If you want to make sure that there's more than just one chest there, you can either add hoppers below that or set up your hoppers so that they, uh, they'll be able to drop into more chests. So start off by placing down your chests into the ground. Take a hopper and place it into that. Or you can also build your chest up one level uh whoops i built a little bit diagonal right here and you can place your trap hopper going directly into it like that if you wanted to create more levels of chests down here to make sure that it can keep on expanding so we'll build this one in this uh fashion and i'm gonna quickly grab that slab there and place that back down so next put down a slab on top of your hopper then take a dispenser i'm gonna put down some temporary blocks so that i can reach and place it facing into the slab, a dispenser on top of that. Then off of the back of that dispenser, you're going to add a hopper facing into it. So make sure the nozzle is facing into that. Then you're gonna take your comparator and output the uh, dispenser and that will detect if anything is inside of it. Then take an observer and face it pointing to that comparator right there. Next, I'm gonna place down, uh, let's get rid of our glass and grass. Uh, we're gonna put down a little chamber here to keep our chicken. And you may wanna build this up, just one extra block temporarily to make sure that no chickens jump out of there. Next, we are going to actually get some chickens. You can use your seeds to get them in there and then make sure that you just have a whole bunch of chickens inside of there. Next, we are going to take another observer and we're gonna face it into that block. Make sure that the observer is actually looking at this space right here. Once that's down, we can go ahead and break all of the extra blocks that we put around there and then add some redstone. Right, let me grab the redstone here and place it in front of, whoops, and behind the observer. So here's what's gonna happen when these guys lay eggs, they're gonna drop them in here. This will notice it and it'll send a tick of uh, redstone. Then it will go on over to here. Inside of here, you're gonna put a lava bucket, drop that lava bucket in there. 
then that will dispense the lava. Make sure that this is all filled up right here so that nothing can escape once it uh, dispenses into there. The lava bucket will be at the top. Then this redstone will also fire this dispenser down here, which should have the egg in it. By the time the egg passes into that dispenser, this will turn off and the observer will see that again, sending another tick of redstone and then that will pull the lava bucket back. So it's all compact. It's super nice redstone. Very, very, very simple. And it is by far the smallest of the uh, chicken farms that I have seen. So I absolutely love that. Another super powerful thing to make early game is a AFK fish farm. This AFK fish farm is also very, very simple to make. If you get a simple fishing rod, then you can also fish up more fishing rods and combine those into anvils. I love AFK fishing because it gives you an awful lot of items, including some mending books and, you know, some really difficult, hard things to get some great bows and arrows that can be enchanted. And all you have to do is put them together in an anvil and you'll get lots of levels as well. Early game, this is my favorite way to get levels to get all the way up to 30 and enchant some high level stuff or to have those levels to put onto the anvil to combine items. And all you'll do is sit here and fish by looking at that note block and you'll get more and more stuff, which is really, really awesome. In order to make this, I'm gonna grab most of the things that you need. And there you go. I think that's just basically everything. We're gonna start by putting down a two chests right here. Then we're gonna put a trap door on top of that and then open it up. Remove a block right here, put a hopper into that chest, then take a fence, place it on top of that, take your pressure plate, put it on top of that. Then make sure that it's just walled off so that no water will fill out. Put down a trap door, that's the same thing to make sure that the water all stays right there. Then a note block, and then you're gonna have to hold down shift and put a any type of block on top of that just to stop it from making a whole bunch of noise. An iron trap door right there, and then take some water, which I don't have on me, and water log this right there. And now it's made. So all you do is you stand on top of this chest, look at the note block. You can stand back from that. You don't wanna accidentally activate that pressure plate right there. Stand back a bit and then cast your line and you'll hit the note block. Your player is constantly clicking that note block so that you're trying to reel in the bobber, but it doesn't actually reel in. Whenever you get a fish, the bobber will come out of the water, unactivating the pressure plate so that the iron trap door falls. When the iron trap door falls, then you can reel back your line and you catch whatever is, uh, whatever fish it is. Then the hopper will scoop it up super fast. It looks like I picked up a bowl right there and then put it into the chest. And so this is a really, really, really nice way to get lots and lots of fish. My next farm, this is a sugarcane farm, and this uses waterlogged blocks to make it very nice to walk through the farm itself. So right here, sugarcane requires that it be placed next to water. So if I grab some sugarcane and just try to put it down, that will not work. But if I happen to have a water block near it, then you can place it on the edge of where that water is. So I could place sugar cane here, 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 and here. So you need that water in order to make sugar cane. So if you waterlog blocks, then you can walk on top of them throughout your farm and not have to worry about accidentally falling into your trough of water that you have placed down. This works with a ton of blocks. I'm using trap doors right here, but you can also do it with slabs. If you happen to have some wooden slabs or even stone slabs lying around that you want to waterlog, you could do that as well. So that is a really nice tip when it comes to the sugarcane farms. And finally, iron is very, very useful in game. And so this is a iron farm right here. It looks super janky but it works fantastically. How this works is that you have some villagers up here. I think I've set my game to peaceful in between setting this up. The hardest part of this is to get the villagers up into the top and the zombie sitting inside of that cauldron. I did an entire video dedicated on this farm and this farm's build takes a little bit longer 
than I have in this video. So I'm gonna suggest that you go check out that video if you want to be able to build this farm. But basically, that zombie scares these villagers, and whenever they're scared, they will spawn an iron golem quicker than if they are just hanging out and it is a village. So an iron golem will pop into this area, the walk towards the zombie, and then the water will push him into this death chamber. That little bit of lava will set him on fire and then you can get some resources from that. Here's some of the resources I have and also some of the building stuff uh, that I kept inside of there. So this is another great way to get a lot of resources from a starter farm. It doesn't require a lot other than time. So the building materials, very, very, very simple. You could really make this early game. It's just the time in order to get the villagers up at the top and the zombie guy up in that cauldron right there there you go my starter builds and farms for you guys to make in your world i hope that you find this video useful to you when you're playing your own minecraft world thanks so much for watching if you enjoyed it please give this video a big old thumbs up also make sure you subscribe for future videos tips tricks tutorials and spotlights here on omg craft see you next time bye